yeah, you can. Okay, stage is yours. Okay, thank you. So, hi everyone. I'm Thomas. I work for a company called Elastic. You may know us for the Elasticsearch database, Kibana, Logstash, Pips, and other cool products. In Elastic, I work in the client's team. My work is to build and maintain the JavaScript client. So if you are having problems with, with it, come complain with me. If you have questions or you want to know how to work with uh, Elastic and Node.js, again, come with me. In my free time, I work a lot in open source. Actually, I am lucky enough to work 100% of my time on open source. So other than that, the JavaScript client, I work on the Fastify web framework, which is a web framework for Node.js. So if you have questions also about that, come to me again. So today I want to talk a little bit about benchmarking. So first question, why do we benchmark? Well, you know, we are humans. We like to measure things. We like also to compete with others, but this is not actually the case. There are many situations why we you want to benchmark your system. For us, for, th for the clients of Elasticsearch, there were many. First of all, we want to detect regression. So we want to see if uh, the changes we are doing are causing some problem to the final performance. Then we, thought we also want to detect changes in Elasticsearch itself, because we are doing a lot of um, TCP hacky things to improve the performance uh, with the client, because uh, Elasticsearch works with HTTP, so we try to improve as much as we can the performance about that. Then we, we want also to check for requests. Everything is open source, so every, every time someone sends us something, we want to see if that uh, change introduces regression or changes something in a nice way. Then we also to confirm our assumptions, especially on the HTTP layer, because we are doing, as I was saying, a lot of things. For example, we are enabling the keep alive in connection, uh, or we are disabling the enable algorithm for uh, improving the TCP um, work. So we want to confirm if uh, our idea is right or not. Then we also want to compare pluggable components because the in the Elasticsearch clients, basically you can change anything. Anything is webable. You can change the HTTP library, the transport layer, the serialization library. So we want to be able to see which components is the best for the job. And finally, yeah. I cannot really say this, but we also like to compete with each, each other. I, my team, I, my team, we work with a lot of different languages: JavaScript, Python, Go, um, Rust, hopefully soon, Ruby, .NET, and so on. So it's kind of fun try to compete with each other. Then there are a lot of different types of benchmarkings. The most interesting are these three: the end-to-end, the -end, which is very is quite simple. So it how much things uh, uh, request from the browser to the database and back. Then this I there is the macro benchmarking, which is what we are doing in the client. So we want to see specifically how good uh, our clients behave co while connecting to the database. And finally, there's the micro benchmarking, where we are just um, checking some very, very small component of your application. In, in our case, for example, we want to see how fast we are um, selecting a new connection, for just serializing an object, and so on. So <coughs> the Elasticsearch team already did a lot of work for us uh, on this regard. They've built this very nice framework, the name is Rally. So if you are working with Elasticsearch, use this framework if you want to benchmark your system. It's very, very nice. It has the concept of tracks. Basically, you should always uh, benchmark your system based on your business needs. Elasticsearch has a, a lot of business needs. So basically, we have a track for every use case we support. So geo thing, HTTP uh, logs, bits, uh, nested, very nested object, and so on. Uh, so when we started working about the benchmarks uh, with the clients, we steal some ideas from Raleigh. First of all, the results should always be published for us. So we publish everything to a Kibana instance somewhere in a way that both us and anyone else can check it down and decide if, if the our clients are OK for them. Then, for now, our code is not yet open source because uh, uh, Rally is built for Elasticsearch. Why? Since we are working with a lot of different languages, everyone has its own implementation. We are still iterating on it. We do not support different tracks because for us, it's just taking an object, serializing, sending to the database, get back the object, deserializing. So there is one track at the end. But we still the infrastructure, all the infrastructure ideas, and also the best practices. Quick note about the published. You can uh, go and see everything about this on uh, our uh, online Kibana. I think the URL is something like Elasticsearch Benchmark 
the plastic loss here. And you will see a lot of benchmarks about uh, how elastic Elasticsearch is behaving between commits, between pull requests after some use cases. So if you have to support something, check this out if you want to see how uh, the system will behave for your business needs. Then a little bit about infrastructure. So never try to benchmark your code on your machine. It's fun, it's fast, but it will never be your business case. So you need to have a, a reproducible environment. For us, what we did is to, we mm, are using the Hetzner box as a provider. We are using the um, physical machines in a way that we can control everything about the machine. We want to control the network, the, the CPU, we want to control everything about the our environment in a way that everything we, de we do is uh, we can reproduce it during time. Then, uh, a little bit about best practices. This is this nice URL, if you want to check it out. It's not only for Elasticsearch. Uh, there is a lot of very nice things you can steal and use on your own benchmark <coughs> system. So, first of all, warm up properly. As you know, a lot of languages, especially Node, um, optimize your code during time, thanks to our V8 friends here. So if you run a benchmark just one time, you cannot really say that your code is optimized because V8 is still have to do all its magic things to improve your code. So we have to run the benchmarks a lot of times to be really sure that your results are consistent. Then you should always model your production workload, which means if your application is serving a huge object every time for every route and you're testing for a very small object, the, the benchmark makes no sense. You should only test for your use case. Then, and this is important, and uh, you should always test your benchmarking software. We aren't for now, because we are still working on it, but it's very important because often your benchmarking software is your bottleneck or can introduce something weird behavior that will cause a bottleneck. And obviously, you should always try to eliminate uh, accidental bottlenecks, so the one that changes a lot the results and you have no clue why. This is a very nice script that uh, the um, APM team is using for doing its job which basically what it's doing is uh, setting the CPU frequency to the same value every time for every run, and it's uh, disallowing the uh, processor to, the basically the process of the, uh, the benchmark should work always in the same processor, cannot be assigned to any other processor. In this way, the result should be kind of predictable. Then, this is a big problem for us, obviously, the network lat latency should be constant. We are always testing also the network part. We are not testing in localhost. Why? Because if you're testing your application with localhost, localhost is very smart. It's basically destroying everything that uh, all the low is lowest part about TCP is extremely fast. So if, you are test if your application is touching the network, localhost is not your friend. You should always try to figure out a way to test also the network. And that's why we, we are using two physical machines. One where there is our client, one where it is Elasticsearch. Both of them are in the same data center, so we can be kind of sure that the latency should be kind of contest, constant. And then you should always, always use a structured process. What does this mean? Um, very often you, you write your application, you want to test something, so you open the terminal, you run auto cannon, okay? And then you see the benchmarks. Okay, that's fine. One week later you test again, but your computer has changed. There are different files, there are alt other processes, there are a variety of different things. So if you are not using a structured process, your results will not be uh, consistent. So this they are computer users, you are just wasting, wasting your time. Another thing is to always use uh, a statisti statistically significant test, which means if you run the test just one time, that number is meaningless. You have to run something a lot of times to be sure that the result can be consistent. You can run some statistic over it, okay? So, how, how we did it in, in the client team? So, which are the problems we needed to solve? First of all, it should be language agnostic. As I said, we support a lot of languages, so it's important that all of us are collecting the same metrics. And uh, this is not easy, because not every language can get the same metric. So, another thing that uh, we do, um, there is a, a plugin for Elasticsearch, which is the no op plugin, which basically um, removes all the computation side from Elasticsearch and just leaves the network layer. So we touch Elasticsearch, we touch their network la layer, so we can also benchmark their changes. 
but we are not um, allowing Elasticsearch to compute anything. And then another thing that we, we do is uh, we have a very well-defined um, result schema. So basically, this is how it works. For every run of, of our benchmarks, we store all of this data, obviously, in Elasticsearch, and we put it in Kibana so we can see how, how it changes during time. First of all, we, we have uh, this category that for now is uh, there are just two, simple and complex. Simple is just a, a very, very simple API call, while complex also um, needs some kind of uh, uh, business logic behind. We are also working on the parallel category, which basically will be um, take all the advantages your language is giving to you to do the best as you can. Then we, we have the action, which basically is just the operation we are performing, so an index, a search, or something like that. Then we have, uh, these are all the statistics we are collecting for now. So we have the mean, median, maximum, minimum, and the starting and deviation, nothing fancy here. Then we have the repetitions. As I said before, you need to warm up your code before testing it. So what we do here, we, we run the, the benchmark without actually taking the measure a uh, certain number of times. Then we measure it, and we run the code a certain number of iteration for every measurement. This is a little bit complex to, to, to explain. Basically, there are some, our client is always the fastest thing in, in the entire uh, architecture that we are using, for sure, because there is the network and then the database, so we are the fastest part. So the only way we have to measure very, very fast things is to run them a lot of times for every measurement. So we can, uh, for example, a ping operation, which is just a head request to Elasticsearch, we measure it uh, 100 times for every measurement. So if we have five measurements and 100 iteration, we are calling the ping API 500 times. Then we also uh, store in in which data set we were using, if we were for a, a specific uh, benchmark. And finally, we are also saving all the data we have about uh, the commit that we are using, the version of the client, the version of Elasticsearch, the version of the platform, the operating system, and every other data we can achieve, we can get. In this way, during time, if there is a, some weird change, we can easily detect if it was uh, related to something that changed in our system or in our code. Then we have our uh, test definition, again, in YAML, because it was easy, and also because we, we can script this in a way that we don't have to R code everything. We have our definition, and we have a runner that we <coughs> should test that basically reads this definition and runs the benchmarks. How this works? We have a, a very simple description, the operation we want to run, the data set, if any, and the repetitions, as I was saying before. It's quite easy. That was it. I'm on time. 